Hi, my name is Dr. John Drake. I'm an assistant professor of tree physiology. Today we're going to talk about leaf traits and how the traits of leaves relate to their environment and their resulting photosynthetic rates. So the key idea of today is that aspects of the environment, availability of water, soil nutrition, and light availability, influence the traits that trees make into their leaves. It's, um, leaves that have different nutrient concentrations, different thicknesses, and photosynthetic capacities. And these differences in traits lead to differences in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis being one of the key things that trees need to do to make their living. And the principal aspect of the environment we'll focus on today is light. Light is highly variable in the environment, and some trees inhabit high light environments in gaps or at the top of forest canopies, and they have high light availability. They make leaves of different traits that influence their ability to do high photosynthetic rates in that high light environment. Trees can sense the availability and spectral quality of their light to make these adjustments. Trees that live in shaded conditions with low light build leaves of differing trait values that lead to their ability to do moderate amounts of photosynthesis under low light. So if we think about the cross section of a leaf that exists under low light in the shade, and we think about drawing a cross section of that leaf, that leaf has two layers of uh, waxy cuticle that prevent water loss. And inside that waxy cuticle, we have an array of cells here that is called the palisade parenchyma that are full of chloroplasts and photosynthetic machinery. And we have the spongy mesophyll, other cells uh, that exist around it, and a lot of airspace uh, that facilitates the exchange of CO2 and water. If we compare that to a similar um, a similar leaf, but that developed under conditions of highlight, that leaf would very often be thicker it still has two layers of waxy cuticle, preventing water loss, but its palisade parenchyma will be more developed in the sense that it often has multiple layers. It is thicker, and it also has spongy mesophyll. These palisade parenchyma are packed full of photosynthetic proteins and chloroplasts that are expensive for the tree to provision into the leaf, but those that high expensive amount of photosynthetic machinery can achieve high photosynthetic rates under high light conditions. So now if we translate that into the, the functional attributes of photosynthesis in response to light, there's a key relationship that we often use to describe differences in, in leaf traits and photosynthetic rates, and that is a light response curve of photosynthesis. So if we look at the relationship between the net CO2 exchange, another word for the net CO2 exchange across the surface of a leaf is the rate of photosynthesis. It varies from high values of, say, 10, down to low values like 0, and actually goes to negative values, say, negative 5, uh, when leaves are in the dark. Leaves are in the dark a lot, every night, for example. And if we look at the relationship between net CO2 exchange and the availability of light, varying from zero values in the dark up to full sun at about 2,000 micromoles of photons per meter squared per second, there are characteristic relationships of photosynthesis with light that are strongly different between shade and sun leaves. This sun leaf, it's packed full of protein and chlorophyll. Um, it has lots of pigments and lots of chloroplasts. And under high light conditions, it can achieve a very high photosynthetic rate. If we can compare that to our shade leaf, that if it was under high light conditions, and this happens occasionally for plants in the shade that get a sun fleck, for example, coming through the canopy, the relatively modest amount of proteins and light absorbing pigments like chlorophyll in these leaves give it a lower, smaller ability to do photosynthesis. Its photosynthetic rates would be substantially reduced. So here we have our shade leaf, and here we have our sun leaf. This large, thick uh, leaf full of lots of photosynthetic proteins has an upkeep cost. 
just like a very large factory the building cars or batteries at very large scales has a, a lot of overhead costs in terms of employing the people and, and running electricity to all those machines and repairing those machines, there's a cost to maintaining a leaf with these traits. We often measure those costs by measuring the rate of CO2 exchange in the dark. This is called the respiration rate. And so the, here is our sun leaf's respiration rate in the dark. It might be funny to you to think about a negative photosynthetic rate, um, but trees are breaking down carbohydrates for energy very much in the same way that I am and releasing CO2 into their environment. As the light increases in the environment, photosynthesis increases up to a maximum value of light saturated rates of at high values in the sun leaves there. Our shade leaf here has fewer proteins to maintain. It is a smaller, more nimble factory that's cheaper to run and maintain. It has a less negative respiration rate, and such that um, photosynthesis still increases with increasing light, uh, but its photosynthetic rate asymptotes at a much smaller value. There are three, character three key characteristics of these photosynthetic light response curves that I think you should know. These values of their maximum photosynthetic rates under high light that are characteristic of the traits of these leaves, um, we, are, we use a Physiologists use a couple of terms for this. One of the common ones is A max. The maximum rate of assimilation is the maximum photosynthetic rate that can be achieved at very high light levels. The value of CO2 exchange in the dark, these two points are called the respiration rate. Respiration. The rate of respiration reflecting the upkeep costs of our factories. Notice there's another special point that occurs here when we have the x-intercept where these curves pass the zero line. These two points here and here, these are called the light compensation points. Often abbreviated LCP. This is a, a really useful um, Thing for us to think about that helps us understand why some trees are able to thrive in the shade and other trees need full sun. So a, a tree that builds leaves that are, that are thin and have a, uh, a modest investment of nutrients and proteins are able to make their living and achieve a net zero photosynthetic rate at a much lower light level. In contrast, trees that build thick leaves that are full of, packed full of photosynthetic proteins need have a higher light requirement for them to have a net zero carbon balance. And so there are shade tolerant trees. Some examples are sugar maple or American beech that tend to make shade leaves that allow them to survive in the shaded understories on dark environments. There's a whole different group of, of trees that need substantial amounts of sun. We often call those shade intolerant trees. Some examples would be um, white ash, or um, um, most of the poplars, for example, uh, that build high investment leaves that can do high photosynthetic rates at high light. Within the crowns of individual trees, we also, also see variation in leaf traits, where we have highlight leaves at the top of tree crowns where the light environment is high, and the same individual of the same species will make shade leaves lower in their crown. So I hope that this short video helped you to further your understanding of the light responses of photosynthesis. Thanks, folks.